Griffin here that has struggled in this series. Griffin goes out, Ibaka, blocked by Serge, Ibaka swapping out of bounds. Siri led the league the previous two. The move was good, Mike. Welcome back you guys, and at one point in Serge Ibaka's NBA career, he was one of the best interior defenders in the league. On the OKC Thunder with Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant, Serge was the man who cleaned everything up on the defensive end, and was a big part of why those OKC teams were so scary on defense. His shot blocking and overall defending skills were so effective that he was picked to the NBA's first team defense for three straight seasons. But in 2018, Serge has found himself on the Toronto Raptors with a declining skill set and now on the bench to start the season, so what happened? If you want to see what Ibaka plays like in person in 2018 or see another NBA team play, the best way to do that is through the SeatGeek app who I want to thank for sponsoring this video. Instead of having to search everywhere on the web for the best ticket prices, SeatGeek does all the work for you by putting every single ticket from that event into one spot for you to pick from. They give those tickets a grade out of 100, so if it's green, then you know it's good, if it's red, then you know it's bad. If you are still not sure about the seat you just picked, they have a feature that lets you see what you're getting before you buy. By supporting SeatGeek, you're also supporting me, so if you're thinking about going to a game or a concert this fall or winter, you can get $20 off your first ticket purchase by using my promo code KANE when you check out. Serge Ibaka was drafted in the late first round of the 2008 NBA Draft and would quickly establish himself as someone who had the potential to be a really good defender. In just his third year, Ibaka would go from a full-time bench player to a starter on an NBA Finals team. In his athletic prime, Serge Ibaka led the league in total blocks for four straight seasons from 2011 to 2014. He also led the league in blocks per game in 2012 and 2013, and was picked to the All-NBA's first defensive team for three straight seasons. The OKC Thunder defenses in that area were very good, and Ibaka had a big part of why they were so dangerous. Serge's defense at the rim was elite, and he was intimidating because the offensive player knew he could not muscle him near the basket, but if you tried to finesse your way around him, he has that super long wingspan so he can contest or block your shot. He is 6'10 and has about a 7'3-7'4 wingspan, so he's gonna block it. Now, Serge wasn't just an elite defender in those years, he was also one of the better offensive rebounders and mid-range shooters at power forward. When teams would help off of Russell Westbrook or Kevin Durant, they would kick it to him for an open mid-range shot, which made OKC tough to stop on offense when he was hitting his shots. There is a stat tracked by NBA.com that shows how good Ibaka's rim protection was. In the 2014 season, Serge held opponents to 48% shooting within 6 feet of the rim, which was the second best percentage for players that defended at least 7 shots per game in that area. In 2015, Serge did something to his game that would make him more useful on offense and will extend his career for many years, and that was become an average to above average spot up 3 point shooter. He was already good at making mid range jumpers, but he extended out to the 3 point line full time that year. In 2015, he hit 37% on threes on 3 attempts per game, which opened up the floor even more for Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant. That stretch from 2011 to about 2015 was the best years for him as a defender, no doubt, and it was a great run. But there was a decline in his dominant rim protection in his last season in OKC in 2016. Remember, in 2014, he held opponents to 48% shooting within 6 feet of the rim, but in 2016, that number jumped up to 54%. While Ibaka definitely had his moments in games with blocks and deflections, there was something different that season. Teams were able to go at Ibaka at the rim and finish over the top of him. It looked like he lost a bit of his first jump explosion that made him one of the elite rim protectors. Now, while his rim protection was declining, so was his agility. Another thing that made Serge so effective on defense was his side-to-side -side foot speed. He could help and recover fast and get back to his man. But that was also declining in 2016. He got beat a lot often than usual. It looked like he was moving in sand while everyone else was playing on a basketball court. It just wasn't the same Serge Ibaka that could fly around the floor, help and recover and block shots. Another part of why Serge declined was that Steven Adams made a leap, so he was the center, which meant that Serge had to defend the perimeter more at power forward. He could not switch onto wing players as effective as he could in his earlier OKC days, which left the team's defense exposed in certain moments. I know this part of the video was harping on his decline, but he still was a useful player in 2016, he just wasn't elite on defense anymore. A month after OKC lost to the Warriors in the conference finals, Serge was traded to Orlando. 
but he wouldn't be there for too long. The fit didn't really make much sense, so the Raptors called up the Magic and agreed to trade Terrence Ross in a first round pick for Surge at the 2017 trade deadline. Ibaka's presence was desperately needed at the power forward spot in Toronto. He played pretty well for Toronto in the 23 games after the trade deadline. Serge averaged 14 points, grabbed 7 rebounds, and shot 40% from the 3 point line. That summer, the Raptors signed him to a 3 year, $65 million contract, and about 6 months ago, it was looking like one of the worst contracts in the league. The decline of his rim protection could be seen in the stats that I mentioned a few times in this video. When defending shots less than 6 feet from the rim in the 2017-2018 season, Ibaka was allowing 57% shooting, which was worse than Jakob Pertl and Jonas Valanciunas. That's not great when you're signed on as the team's best rim defender, and a rookie and someone who's not known for their defense is more effective than you. Ibaka was pretty forgettable for the rest of the 2018 playoffs. At one point in those playoffs, Ibaka was averaging just 5 rebounds while shooting 28% from the floor and getting buckets dropped on his head. Those stretch of playoff games made people question the $65 million contract he just received. But now in the 2018-2019 season with Nick Nurse, it looks like this is going to be a revival year for Serge. The big problem last season for Serge was that he played way too many minutes at power forward. Head coach Dwayne Casey liked having Ibaka in with another big man, which just doesn't work for him in this NBA climate. He's simply not fast enough to play on the perimeter for 30 minutes a night. He's more suited to play center in a small ball lineup, and that is exactly what is happening now under new head coach Nick Nurse. The timing of this video isn't the greatest because Ibaka has looked really good in the last two games, especially against the Boston Celtics. Serge has been wildly inconsistent in the past two years, so I'm sure he won't look as good on offense as he did against Boston all the time. But if he's going to be a center full time, then I'd expect a lot less bad play for him on defense. Serge can take advantage of his height against certain teams and won't have to move out to the three-point line as often as he did the past 3-4 years. If he can hit the three at an average rate, grab rebounds, and play center for 80% of his minutes, then he'll be good. Will he be the dominant defensive player in OKC again? Definitely not, but he can still be useful, which is all you can ask for at this point for someone taking up 20 million of a team's salary cap. Again, I know the timing of this video isn't that great, and it's not like his career is over or anything. That's not what I'm saying. I just wanted to talk about his decline from being an elite defender to just a good starter. I almost scrapped this video idea, but I thought it'd be a cool topic to talk about, as I don't think anyone has made a Serge Ibaka video in a while. As always, appreciate you guys for coming through and sticking to the end. Let me know if you have any other players in mind for this type of video. There will be a playlist for other what happened to their career videos I've done in the past, and it will pop up on your screen in 3, 2, 1.